Hi, Henk Akwans here, Supply Chain Dynamics, Chapter 7. This day a gameplay 3, Project Planning Loops. This sector of the model combines some of the other sectors with some more sophisticated feedback loops. There is, for instance, this notion of the schedule pressure effect in stage 1 and also in stage 2 and probably also in stage 3. Uh, where does that come from? That comes from here. Uh, we have a postponement rate of stage 2. And you see that here we have a scheduled pressure effect of stage 1. So the greater that this effect becomes, the more stuff, more tasks are being postponed to stage 2. And when is that? That is when time is running out. A way of measuring how time is running out is by looking at the degree in which the schedule is met. The schedule adherence. You see here that the schedule adherence is defined as how many tasks we need to do in stage one divided by how much task, how many tasks we're actually doing. When this number becomes much greater, it means that there is far more work to be done than we can actually do. And you do see that there's a rapid increase here and a gradual decline uh, over there. Uh, and that's also what's happening then in this sketch. And the schedule sketch is that as this number becomes greater than one, indeed this, uh, I mean the, the, the schedule adherence effect, uh, more and more stuff, uh, the schedule pressure increases. Uh, you can see it somewhat more in detail here, that at greater numbers, and indeed significant numbers of the schedule pressure effect, uh, uh, of, of the, 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 the schedule adherence, uh, the schedule pressure effect also becomes greater. Now, okay, so here we've got the schedule adherence. Uh, let's look up some routes. We already saw the development rate of stage one. That, that comes from uh, the, uh, simply here, the, 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 the basic flows. The required stage one completion rate is a function of how many tasks there are to be developed, divided by how much time is remaining in stage one. You can understand that as time remaining in stage one becomes smaller and smaller, that actually this task becomes greater and greater. Um, and, and that's also what's happening up here. So the time remaining in test stage one is uh, becoming less and less, because what is that? It's uh, the original time. Uh, mine is the start time of stage two. So in the moment that stage, uh, uh, that, that stage two should start after 40 weeks, mine is the current uh, period with a little correction of 0 0.1 because else up here you get a division uh, by zero and that's not what you get. So you always have a very small number left up here. So the time remaining in stage one, uh, as that declines, then the required stage completion rate becomes much greater. So the schedule adherence becomes a much greater number. And so the pressure effect becomes much greater. Uh, so there uh, you see uh, something coming up uh, in this effect, in this dynamic. Another dynamic is here, the required stage completion rate. Uh, this not only is an input to the schedule errors, but will also drive capacity uh, requirements. Uh, up here, of course, in the capacity adjustment rate, there is a required stage one completion rate uh, up here as well. Um, so the more capacity that is required, the more capacity that will become uh, available given budget constraints. And we'll also see it in the workforce allocation because there's also the proportion of stage one to stage two and to stage three. So this is true for st stage one. There is also the same thing for stage two. And this then results also in a start time for stage two. The last thing, this start time, where does that come from? Uh, it starts off uh, at the initial start, but it can become greater as there are delays uh, from the schedule pressure. So not just uh, there are two effects when, when, when in one stage there's not enough time to finish the work. One is to postpone work to another stage. The other one is to uh, make actually the start time of the second stage later. And that's the schedule pressure effect of stage one. And that's also happening here, and that uh, makes the, the, the time indeed, as you can see, later uh, than the original estimated time. And as soon as that happens, then basically the overall project is doomed because there is just 
a limited amount of buffer time, actually some 20 time units in total, uh, before uh, the final deadline is met. Uh, some booleans here. There is a boolean if, uh, uh, for, uh, if the stage 2 has been started and also stage 3 has been started. And that is uh, needed uh, for some of the capacity allocations elsewhere in the model. A very convenient variable as long as this stage has not started, uh, the other equations become, uh, remain zero. So there's quite some sophisticated um, uh, triggering and, 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 and uh, increasing, decreasing feedback loops uh, in this part of the model.